In the SHD four-step row level four exercise, you're going to be in the standing position, just like level three. And as you remember, it's with parallel feet, knees bent at least 20 degrees, pelvis in this neutral position, abdomen drawn in, ideal spinal alignment, slight lordotic curve, slight kyphotic curve, slight lordotic curve in the cervical spine. Step one, drawing the scapula all the way back and down, no winging. Let's bring those scapula into external rotation. So some people will actually wing the scapula a little bit, so you need to make sure that they're not winging. They're not flaring off the rib cage, that you're pulling tight with the serratus anterior to draw the scapula flush with the rib cage. Scapula coming down and back in step one. Step two, using the glenohumeral joint and elbows, maximizing that scapular stabilization position, maintaining this position while the elbow and shoulder returns. And lastly, reaching into protraction. Now, the other thing that's important is we're keeping that lordotic curve and we're keeping the external meatus over the middle of the shoulder, very important. Now, in the four step row, level four, now that you're getting all the form perfect, you're on the fourth level of doing this proper execution of four steps now. Now we're gonna start increasing load. So with increasing load, it's really important, kind of like the Karate Kid, remember the wax on, wax off for thousands and hundreds of thousand repetitions. That's why we improve in these levels. So now that we can start increasing load, your form should not go to hell in a handbasket, all right? It needs to stay really, really good. So, as you remember, the attachment point of the cable or the attachment point of the band should be slightly above the shoulders for that purpose of that line of pull into the muscles for the lower trapezius, mid trapezius, rhomboids, and serratus anterior. With this position, if we start loading up, let's, let's come and return the weight for a moment. When we start really increasing that load, so let's go ahead and go into, just do one rep for me. So now when we really increase the load, what needs to happen? Now, you, 20 degree bend in the feet and the knees isn't gonna be enough. Now you need to get into like 50, 60, almost a, sometimes a full squat. So if, if you are the client or the fitness doctor practitioner, your client's very strong, you need to have a deeper, deeper, deeper squat and now apply that strength with the motion. Pull, 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 good, and release. Now, let's take the weight back. Two things are really important you just learned here. Let's continue. One thing is, then the knees need to bend more. And when that happens, squat, 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 you wanna make, make sure the pelvis stays neutral. So drawing the abdomen in, so you can forget about all those things very easily when you start adding load. You can't forget about your form and execution of the proper biomechanical optimization of this exercise. So the other thing that's really important is if you're using a weight stack or if you're using an old band, fitness doctor practitioners, you better be right here with your client supporting them, okay? Because it is possible that that cable breaks or that band breaks. And where's your client going? They're going on the floor and they might get hurt. So you need to make dang sure that you're in a position, not just kneeling as I'm demonstrating a video, but you're behind them and ready in case that were to happen. Now it's not a high likelihood, it's one in a million, but I don't want you to be that one in a million. So to make sure that never happens, be there prepared, ready to support and keep your clients safe. Now the other thing that is really important, I want you fitness doctor practitioners to know here, is why are we going through all these levels? We're now in level four. What is so important about having a neutral pelvis and abdomen drawn in and the right knee position and all this perfect alignment of this exercise? Well, here's why. It comes down to motor unit synchronization. If you get used to loading, for example, with an anterior pelvic tilt and you do heavy exercises, which is this is the way most people train, and you're doing like anterior pelvic tilt position, you're loading these muscles, you're training the neurological system 
and the mechanical characteristics of the tissue to function in a short position. If you're training your body to function in a short muscle position, where's it gonna go when you need to have performance? It's gonna go to a short position. But the body knows that's misalignment. And the joints know it because they feel shear stress from this position. So what happens is you start to add additional load and stress by being misaligned during stimulus or during load. So you wanna stimulate the fibers in a resting length or mid-length position typically, especially stabilizing positions like the pelvis, so that when you're loading and you're training your body this way, it'll naturally go to that resting length position and be very, very strong because that's the way you train your body, to function well in ideal alignment. So you wanna make sure you train with that ideal alignment to train the body for those purposes.